Now we need to look at the properties of sums. Terms of sums can be divided into two different sums. This is our first property, and this is telling us that if I have two terms being added together, I can divide this into two different summations. For example, if I have the sum from i equals 1 to 10 of 3i minus i squared, I can split this apart into the summation from i equals 1 to 10 of 3i minus the summation of i equals 1 to 10 of i squared. There's a lot of times when this is going to make the problem easier for us. We like being able to split sums. For example, in example 1a from above, I could have split this into two different sums. Could have divided this into the summation from i equals 1 to 4 of 3i minus the summation from i equals 1 to 4 of 2. Now let's look at another property. Constants can be factored out of a sum. So if I have some constant times the term, I can pull that constant out front and just multiply the final sum by that constant number. For example, if I have the summation uh, from i equals 3 to 7 of negative 5i, I can pull out that negative 5 and just figure out the summation from i equals 3 to 7 of i. That ends up being negative 5 times 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 plus 7. So I get negative 5 times 4 and 6 is 10, 8, 15, 25. So I get negative 125 as my answer. We could also see that from this example above. We could then rewrite the summation of 3i as 3 times the summation from i equals 1 to 4 of i minus the summation from i equals 1 to 4 of 2. And actually, I'm going to even pull this 2 out, and you'll see why in a little bit, and just leave a 1 behind. All right, our next property. A sum can be broken apart into smaller sums. So if I am taking a sum from i equals 1 to n of ai, I can split apart the sum from 1 to n and pick some number in between. So I pick some number k in between 1 and n. And I can take the sum from 1 to k and then add that to the sum from k plus 1 to n. For example, if I'm summing from 1 to 20, I'm going to pick 5 and decide to cut my sum into two parts. I can sum the terms from 1 to 5 and then I can sum the terms from 6 to 20 separately and add those two sums together. All right, so those are the three properties of sums. And those are the basic properties. We're next going to look at some formulas. But first, I really need to make sure that you have those properties down, that we can split terms that are being added into two different sums. We can factor out a constant, and we can split a sum into smaller sums. So if 1 to 20 is too big of a summation, we can split into 1 to 5 and 6 to 20. You can even split this into 1 to 5, and then 6 to 10, and then 11 to 15 and then 16, 20. You can break it into as many sums as you want to. Okay, next we'll look at some sum formulas. Yes, the pun is intended. <laughs>